The Battle of Goose Green took place on the 28th and 29th of May 1982 during the Falklands War between Britain and Argentina. Goose Green was a settlement on East Falkland, the more populated of the two islands. It had an airstrip and was close to San Carlos Water, where the British task force had landed in its attempt to retake the Falklands. It ultimately played a large role in the outcome of the conflict, yet the decision to attack Goose Green was controversial. Argentine forces were concentrated heavily around the capital, Port Stanley. British military planners noted that the Goose Green force was dug in defensively and posed little offensive threat to the British advance towards the capital. Their strategy was to surround and neutralise the enemy position and instead directly assault Port Stanley. However, the military were coming under heavy pressure from the British government to deliver a headline-grabbing victory that would firmly establish momentum. British ships had sustained damage and loss from Argentine air attacks and while the military calculation still favoured the British, the political calculation was foremost in the government's mind. An attack on Goose Green posed problems. The terrain was rolling, treeless and grassy. In addition to having no cover, the ground would be boggy during the South Atlantic winter. The Argentine forces, known as Task Force Mercedes, were entrenched in well-chosen areas and had set up fields of fire. They also had air defence batteries and howitzers. Close air support was in nearby Stanley. In total, the defenders had 1,083 men, under the command of Lieutenant Colonel Italo Piaggi. Some of the men were commando trained, but the majority were basically trained conscripts. Morale remained high, however, helped by a recent airdrop of supplies. On the 25th of May, Brigadier Julian Thompson, the ground forces commander, was ordered to mount an attack on Argentine positions around Goose Green and the nearby settlement of Darwin. Thompson ordered the 2nd Battalion of the Parachute Regiment to initially attack south of the settlement before the main attack came from the north. The battalion, commanded by Lieutenant Colonel Herbert H. Jones, had been told by HQ that they were up against three infantry companies, but an SAS survey suggested there was only one. Jones chose to believe the SAS report and consequently was much more aggressive in his mindset, believing he could win the battle in the first attack. Straight away there were problems. The BBC had broadcast a report stating that the Paras were to attack Goose Green and the Argentines, not surprisingly, were listening in. Despite that, in the initial contact, before daybreak on the 28th of May, the Argentines were forced to regroup and A and B companies of the Parachute Regiment gained ground. At about 7.30am, the Argentinians counterattacked from Darwin Hill between the attackers and Goose Green, halting the British advance with a mix of small arms and artillery fire. Now it became clear that Jones' strategy was not the right one. The British were outmanned and outgunned on Darwin Hill and were forced to fall back to a gorse line below it. Jones, accompanied by others, decided to charge the positions but was killed by enemy fire. Command passed to Major Chris Keeble. Now in mid-morning full daylight, he chose to reorganise the attack, pumping around 1,000 rounds of mortar fire into Darwin Hill. There's lots more to come in this video, but please consider liking, subscribing to the channel, and sharing. And please consider supporting my work with a PayPal donation. The link is in the description. Thank you. An Argentine Air Force support strike that foggy morning was a complete fiasco. Part of their fire was on their own positions, and they were engaged by their own anti-aircraft units, 
who assumed they were being attacked by British planes. In the end, the Argentines held Darwin Hill for over six hours, finally cleared out by around 1.30pm. Following this, C and D companies of the Paras moved on the airfield and schoolhouse building in Goose Green. C Company was immediately bombarded by 35mm anti-aircraft guns and took heavy casualties, but with sustained mortar and missile fire, the Argentines were again forced to abandon positions and retreat. This time, large numbers of the Argentine 12 platoon were overrun and forced to surrender. D Company got into a firefight at the airfield, which was also the scene of the infamous White Flag incident. According to the British, someone waved a white flag on the Argentine side, and when Lieutenant Barry and Corporal Sullivan advanced to accept the surrender, they were fired upon and killed. The remaining British soldiers launched a bayonet charge and took the airfield. Argentine troops were able to regroup on the outskirts of Goose Green, and despite making big gains, the British troops were now stretched, with B Company isolated, a situation made worse by the arrival of Argentinian reinforcements from nearby Kent Hill. Whilst the Argentinians were surrounded, their attackers were running low on supplies and ammunition. Reinforcements were on the way, but Keeble didn't want to leave the door open for an Argentinian counterattack. Instead, he proposed to ask the Argentinians to surrender or be bombarded by artillery and airstrikes, then attacked when reinforcements had arrived. Late in the evening, a message was sent to Piaggi, and after midnight, the Argentinian commander received a prisoner of war delegation to negotiate a surrender. After consultation with superiors, Piaggi reluctantly agreed. Had he not done so, he and his troops faced being pummeled by artillery fire, with no reasonable chance of victory. He was heavily criticised after the war and forced to resign from the army. Writing a book to answer his critics, he detailed why further resistance was futile. In 1992, after a long fight through the courts, he finally had his rank and pension restored. Keeble was awarded a DSO for his command of the battle, one of many to receive awards on both sides. Jones was posthumously awarded a Victoria Cross, though there was criticism from some that his actions in command at Goose Green had been reckless. Corporal David Abels was awarded a Distinguished Conduct Medal for a daring assault in which he fired a Laws rocket that knocked out sniper positions on Darwin Hill, decisively altering the course of the engagement. The battle for Goose Green was more symbolic than strategically important. The surrender of Argentine forces was a body blow to their military and a corresponding boost to the British. Fifty miles away in Port Stanley, the Argentinians must have heard the distant drums, and a little more than two weeks later, they would be surrendering too.